Welcome to our Africa IP series, showcasing the people from administrators to influencers to practitioners who make up the African IP landscape. Today, we have the pleasure of having the outgoing Director General of the African Regional Intellectual Property Organization, ARIPO, Dr. Fernando Dos Santos. Dr. Dos Santos, welcome. Thank you very much, Mins, uh, for this opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. It's our pleasure, Doctor. Thank you for, for being here. Um, as you reflect on your eight years at uh, ARIPO, what would you say are the highlights of your tenure as the Director General? Well, uh, eight years is a long time, but um, there were a few things that really, uh, when I took over, I, I thought should be the, the, the focus of my, my, my tenure. Uh, first and foremost, I joined the repo because I believe that this organization is an organization that can be useful for the continent of Africa. Uh, it is an important role in the development of one of the uh, most impressive tools for the development of our, of our, our countries, which is intellectual property. So, but one thing that we, uh, always intrigued me uh, before Agenda Rebo was the fact that such a put, uh, an organization with a, a, a lot of potential and so useful and necessary for the continent of Africa was, uh, um, was, not, well, was, not, was overlooked. And it was not given the prominence and the, uh, the, the importance that it, it really had. So the first thing that uh, was my focus um, in, at, at RIP was really to bring it up and uh, uh, promote uh, its image, uh, uplift the image of this organization and the role that it could play for the development of the continent. And I believe this has been all the time the focus of all my uh, uh, activities. And we focused on that, we concentrate on that in, uh, uh, in, in, in everything that we're doing. Starting from awareness creation. So awareness creation about the importance of intellectual property, but connected to that also uh, the awareness creation on the role that the Aribo could play. Uh, capacity building, training people to understand and use much better the intellectual property system, which also meant to use the repo system, which has uh, uh, so many tools and so important um, uh, 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 features that could help the continent to, to, to move on. And uh, also uh, bringing more and more uh, partnerships to the continent of Africa. Who better could do that than a, a regional organization to uh, pull uh, 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 put together, uh, you know, bring the, 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 the partners who uh, had experience, uh, had resources uh, to assist our member states, to assist our users, to assist our uh, companies to use the intellectual property system. So everything revolved around uplifting the image of intellectual property, uplifting the image of um, of, of, of Ari. I think you've certainly done that, uh, Dr. Dos Santos. And now when looking at the individual countries within a repo or generally in Africa, what did you say is the greatest hindrance at attracting more users of our intellectual property systems? So looking at the, <clears throat> as we indicated the, 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 the focus of our, of our organization, uh, it, it also explains uh, indeed what is going on in terms of, of our, our countries. Uh, but probably today, uh, after eight years, I may uh, shift uh, my approach in, with regard to your question. In the past, I right. would have said that uh, the difficulty that we're having is that uh, maybe the user don't trust our systems or our systems are lacking of, of something. Uh, right. And uh, both institutional frameworks and even legal frameworks and then the policies. But I would like to... Uh, probably today uh, shift my, my, my focus on one important thing, which is to look at the innovation ecosystem in our continent and say right. probably is the innovation ecosystem that uh, is yet not uh, uh, making good use of intellectual property system because uh, they are attracting uh, other uh, uh, users or countries to use our system means that first of all, uh, the continent of Africa has to use the intellectual property system. Now, if you look at the statistics, patents, trademarks, or whatever intellectual property right, you will realize right. 
that uh, 95, 97% of the applications that we're getting are not from, from, from the continent of Africa. They're coming from abroad. And that uh, um, uh, reflects the use of the innovation system, the use of intellectual property by the innovation system. Because the whole issue is not about Africa not innovating or not having creativity. We know that this continent has potential, has a lot of things going on in terms of innovation. In the universities, uh, uh, individuals, uh, there is a lot of innovation happening. Uh, and, but much of that innovation um, end up uh, you know, uh, in oblivion because it's uh, in the informal sector or uh, it's not brought up through the use of the natural property system. So we have innovations, but not, they're not turned into IP assets. So this is the first uh, problem. And, and, and today I want to focus on this side of, 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 of the story to say that uh, the African continent needs to embrace intellectual property and understand that intellectual property can assist the continent to um, bring up its innovation and creativity and value it. Then we can move to the other users coming from uh, outside which in reality are the ones that are in this moment are, are, are feeding the, the, the system. Because as we said, 95, 97% of our applications come from outside Africa. Uh, if the system works in Africa and if it is used by the African, then we will be able to attract other users from other, other continents. So to come back, coming back to your question, so the biggest hindrance uh, really of uh, the use of intellectual property system in our countries is um, within uh, the, our innovation ecosystems, which need to be improved and need to embrace intellectual property uh, rights. Uh, then we can move uh, now to the usual um, issues that we raise and uh, ask questions regarding the uh, legal uh, systems. Uh, but we know that the uh, uh, IP legal system, the IP legal framework have been improved since uh, the TRIPS agreement. Uh, many of uh, the legislation in the African continent uh, are updated. Some of the laws are, are really modern. We know that they are here and there, uh, the legal system could be improved, but as they are now, they could wait. Uh, then on the institutional framework, the African continent has now institutions that deal with intellectual property. We have in many countries, uh, uh, autonomous, independent intellectual property offices. We need to improve those office. We need to give them more capacity in terms of uh, administration of intellectual property rights, but those institutions uh, are there. So uh, on that side also, I, I, may, I may say much has been done. Uh, probably there's need to improve one side of, uh, of, our, um, of our intellectual property system, uh, more connected with the uh, macro level, uh, let's say uh, the intellectual property policies. Uh, we need a vision from our government. There must be direction from the government to say intellectual property is important for the development of our country. <clears throat> and we need to mainstream intellectual property policies into other developmental policies. Whatever policy is there <clears throat> need to incorporate intellectual property because we know that intellectual property is cross-cutting. So there is no area of life, the area of economy that could can, can survive uh, without the use of intellectual property. When we look at the uh, continental setups, uh, we are now uh, we are now led uh, by the uh, agenda uh, 2063, and the main um, uh, 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 motto of the uh, agenda 2063 is that we have to develop economy, uh, innovation-led and knowledge-based economies. Now there is no innovation-led and knowledge-based economy without intellectual property. So it means that there is need to mainstream intellectual property in this bigger agenda, and then be able to cascade down this into a concrete implementation or incorporation into the develop, develop, developmental uh, policies that, that we have, then down to concrete implementations. It's very important that we uh, uh, implement uh, 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 IP uh, 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 related uh, uh, instruments or, 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 or mechanisms so that we can be able to add value
to what already is happening in terms of innovation and creativity in the continent. That's excellent. Um, what I liked about your answer, Dr. Dos Santos, as well, is the firm grasp that you have in terms of what Africa needs to, to develop its intellectual property. And I'm wondering whether in the new chapter of your life, after um, this period as the Arepo DG, uh, will you continue to work within the African IP landscape? Certainly. Uh, I think that uh, I have dedicated my uh, uh, entire professional life on, on intellectual property. Uh, it's been more than 17 years now that I'm, I'm, I'm working in the administration of intellectual property system. I have accumulated a bit of experience. I believe that that experience can be uh, relevant both to the public sector and the, uh, and the private sector and also the academia. And I intend uh, uh, indeed to use um, uh, that knowledge uh, to serve, first of all, the intellectual property community. Uh, so I, I would be glad to continue uh, working with the intellectual property community uh, to uh, uh, develop the intellectual property system. But most importantly, I would be glad to be doing that for the benefit of my continent, the African continent. So I, um, uh, as, it, as we are speaking now, I, 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 I am yet to uh, think precisely what I will be doing in, in the future, but definitely it will be on intellectual property. And I hope to be useful to my country and to my continent. No, that's very good because uh, Africa needs the skills that you've uh, demonstrated during your time. And for me, the one thing that has uh, defined your tenure as the um, Aripo DG has been your accessibility and willingness to interact and encourage cooperation with the users of the system. Uh, was this one of your objectives from the onset? Certainly, as I indicated at the, believe, at the beginning, uh, I, I was shocked by the fact that such an important organization was overlooked by those who could benefit from it, uh, both government and uh, university and the users. So one of uh, my, my focus during my, my tenure was really to get in touch with the, with the users, to tell them that uh, there is a tool that they can use, they can benefit, and all the, uh, uh, the initiatives that we undertook in terms of improving the image of the organization was also to offer better services to, uh, to, 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 to the African continent and, and the world. So uh, starting from the infrastructure development that we undertook at Aripo was all to be able to serve better the users, uh, both uh, in, in, in improving the business process of Aripo was also to make the, the system much more simpler, uh, accessible, user-friendly. So we introduced all the um, uh, features, uh, online features in our, in our business processes. Uh, today, uh, we are operating fully online. And even during this period of COVID-19, uh, all staff are working from home and the users do not even realize that uh, uh, all the work that we're doing is done from home because we developed system that make this uh, uh, mechanism work uh, fully uh, uh, or, uh, online. Uh, but uh, in, in, in this was possible because we listened to the users. We understood what they were looking for. So we went towards improving our system so that they could serve better uh, uh, our users. And the same regarding the, the governments, uh, better um, advice to the governments in terms of policy legislation and institution. So we did that also to be able to serve them, but we had to listen to them and that meant having access to, the, to them and also being uh, fully uh, accessible uh, to the users uh, of, of, of the IP system. We did that also in a very focused manner. For example, uh, 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 interacting directly with uh, the users uh, associations or uh, 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 groups, uh, for example, INTA or FICP or AIPPI. So we engage the users through uh, those platforms. And we participated actively in the events that were organized every year by those organizations, including by um, you know, having all the time a booth where we could give more explanation, more illustration of how the systems work. And we're able to bring more and more users and the users for the users to trust um, uh, uh, our system. Um, uh, and then also interacting with the public. 
by going into the country uh, uh, during the period 2014, 2017, we went, uh, we visited all the countries through a, 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 a flagship program that we developed, which was called uh, Roving Seminars. So we interact directly with the uh, governments, uh, parliamentarians, uh, journalists in different countries, explain them about the repo and showing them how we could uh, work with them. In the period 2018 to 20, um, uh, 2017, 2019, we interacted, uh, we focused on university and research institutions. And there, once again, we visited countries, we organized uh, seminars uh, with, the, with the universities, we provided uh, guidelines in terms of how they could develop uh, intellectual property policies uh, in the university, how they could uh, work with the intellectual property system, uh, setting up technology transfer and innovation um, uh, centers in the university, having the IP policies, uh, and uh, 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 conducting awareness programs in, in the institution. You also know that we will also uh, interact with people by uh, coming out with the programs to train people, capacitate people in using intellectual property. And I'm talking about the master's program on intellectual property. Uh, you know that we, uh, we, we have uh, a, a, a master's program that we organize jointly with the WIPO and the African University in Zimbabwe, which we, uh, is now in its 12th, uh, 12th edition. And we trained more than 358 people uh, coming from 26 countries. So that those, all those are our ambassadors, apart from them uh, you know, being active in the intellectual property uh, system. We uh, also established two new master's programs during this period, one at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Kumasi, Ghana, and another one at the University of Dar es Salaam. So our footprint in the African continent is much bigger today, and we are kind of omnipresent, and that's why it was, it, we, we became accessible because we created so many mechanisms uh, of interaction with both uh, power, uh, 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 governments, uh, users, uh, uh, and, 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 and the academic institutions. Oh, Dr. Santos, you've put a tremendous amount of work into a repo, and I think it shows with the prominence uh, with which a repo now uh, operates. And lastly, Dr. Santos, on behalf of Adams and Adams, I wish to commend you for the great work that you have done as Director General and for your willingness to work with us in trying to promote awareness amongst our clients of the repo system and of the open door policy that you have adopted. Um, we wish you all the best with your future endeavors and look forward to again working with you in developing the IP landscape in Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adams and Adams. Uh, you also created really different platforms uh, for us to interact with you. And we also thank you for, for, for those initiatives. I wish you well. I wish well to you as a, a, a company. I wish you well all users of the intellectual property system. I believe that Aripo will continue saving you, but Aripo also needs your support. So trust in Aripo, help Aripo to grow because that is for the benefit of the users and for the African continent. Thank you very much. Thank you, doctor.